Hi, happy Tuesday. Orphan's Promise has six key areas of impact that we work on, and one of them is community transformation, and that can sound like just a term. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what does that mean when Orphan's Promise talks about transforming a community? Well, it means that we don't just look at one aspect of what a community needs, but we look at a more overall need within the community, something that will change the quality of life for them, and not just briefly, but on an ongoing basis. So today I want you to meet some of the most beautiful people that I've ever had occasion to spend time with. Colorful, talented, creative, the Maasai Mara from Kenya. We went to this area and found that the children had no education, so we have created a school there. The kids are being educated. We're feeding them. Uh, they're being discipled in Christ, and because there was a need for water, we were able to partner and, and dig a water well for them so that they now have flowing water. But I want to show you how doing all of that has led into other aspects of transforming this amazing community into something even more special. Take a look. I'm Dan Rainey, reporter producer for CBN. I have a master's in anthropology and I travel the world bringing back stories of the good CBN does in people's lives. Now I want to go deeper with people to better understand their struggles as they fight to survive one day at a time. When the plane landed in Maasai Mara, I was greeted by the vast array of wildlife that helped make this relatively untouched part of Kenya famous. I soon arrived at a nearby Maasai village and was welcomed by the students of a school built and supported by CBN's Orphan's Promise. Village life here is peaceful. Children go to school, Mothers tend to their homes, and men take the cattle to graze. That day, I met up with Olanasi and his family. Nice, thank you. Maasai don't have uh, shepherd's crooks, they have spears, because we have lions here. I constantly whistle, so the wild animals know I'm around. It keeps them away. Herding cattle, seemed easy. Little harder than it looks. I lost him, like the whole herd. Found him. As we were herding, Olanasi and I talked. Before CBN came here, we had to go very far to get enough water for our cattle and ourselves. I lost 50 of my cattle during the drought. I had terrible pains in my stomach because of sickness from the dirty water. At one point, I was too sick to take my cattle out, so my wife had to do it. That day, lions came and killed two of my cattle. I was afraid I would be the next victim. I climbed the tree and called for help until some men came and chased the lions away. After that, I never looked after the cattle again. Olanasi and I walked over fields and through thick brush to where they used to collect water. CBN drilled a deep well right by the old source. Now, even during drought, they have enough water for the entire village and all their cattle. So the old water source and the new water source are really side by side. Those solar panels are pumping fresh, clean water all the way up to the village. Now, in the old days, they used to collect water here from this open, open spring, and they shared this with animals. So this is not water you would ever want to drink. Whenever I went for water, I was afraid lions would be there drinking. The water was very far away. We'd go through the wilderness to get there, and on the way, we'd meet with wild buffalo and elephants. Because of your help, we have many cattle again. Since the taps are so close to the village, people can now fetch water anytime they want, without fearing the wild animals. Before, we only bathed once each week. Now we can bath whenever we want. You know, I've done this water routine before, but I can see the village from here and I know this is fresh, clean water, so this is a piece of cake. Having water so close has changed everything. Now, even the children can fetch water. 
After bringing in the cattle, they showed me how they craft that elaborate jewelry. Making a big bracelet takes about two weeks. It's a Maasai tradition to dress as we do. Some like wearing more than others. You cannot wear the traditional clothing without the beads. You have to look shiny. With more time on their hands thanks to the well, the ladies make more jewelry to sell in the market, ensuring a steady flow of income for their families. We are so happy. The support we received is so important. Everyone in the village benefits from the projects. As a born-again Christian, I know that it was God who gave us the well and the school. Before the school was built, classes were held under a tree. Our books blew in the wind, and when it rained, we stayed home. We were taught about God under the tree, so we prayed and asked God for a church, a school, and water. Now all those prayers are answered. At night, when the children have gone home, the chores are done, and the cattle are resting, parents come to the school, one by one, to learn how to read and write themselves. It's something they never had the opportunity to do before. One, two, three. My life has changed. I can write one to a hundred. This means I can walk to the bank, write my own name and my numbers, and withdraw my money without any help. In the beginning, it was hard for me to use a pen on a book, but now it has become so easy. When my mom comes back from class, she asks me questions about the things she didn't understand. I explain things and help her. I am so proud of her. <laughs> With water from the well, we also started a vegetable garden outside the village. As the women of the village tend the garden, children come from the school to learn all about agriculture. Some of the crops are used to feed the kids at school. The village gets all the rest. It's a different way of life for the Maasai, but one that was necessary for their survival. <laughs> During the famine, there was not even any milk. The cows dried up and died, and there was always sickness and death. Now everyone is healthy, and disease is a thing of the past. As the day drew to an end, the men of the village showed me how they make fire. Yeah, it's happening so fast. I thought we would be here like two hours. I see smoke already. <laughs> <laughs> then it was my turn. This is why they do it as a demonstration and don't let other people like try with them. There's a little smoke. I'm getting there. Yes, it is harder than it looks. Has it been two hours yet? I'm not even anywhere close, am I? <sighs> well, we got the fire started without much help from me at all. We're getting ready to get the party started. In honor of my visit on behalf of CBN, the warriors of the village danced and sang long into the night. We roasted a goat over the open fire, and we all ate until we were full. I didn't want the night to end, but eventually it was time to sleep. I went inside, passed the goats and the chickens, and turned in. Long day, but a good day. They've got their spare room set up for me, so I think I'm gonna sleep pretty hard tonight. Oh. Early the next morning, it was time to say our goodbyes. I thank God for what he has done, and I thank him for your coming here. You have changed our lives. As I drove away, I took in the sights and sounds of Kenya one last time. I left with a sense of peace, knowing the families here have hope for a brighter future. So I hope you can see in this story how when we reach out to children in need, it filters into families, into the parents that are leading them in their lives and ultimately changes the community. A little investment goes a long way. Thank you, Orphans Promise Partners, for helping us accomplish this, not just in Kenya, but around the world. Mm -hmm.